Good morning to the communities of St. James Amesbury, All Saints West Newberry, and everyone else joining us this morning. Our service today will be Daily Morning Prayer Rite 1, beginning on page 40 of the Book of Common Prayer. If you do not have a prayer book and would like to follow along, you can find the prayer book at bcponline.org. Click on the Daily Office and then click on Daily Morning Prayer Rite 1. Our readings for this morning can be found at lectionarypage.net. Click on June 14th. Click on June 14th. Again, our service today is Daily Morning Prayer Rite 1, beginning on page 40 of the Book of Common Prayer. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Saying together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Turn to page 44, the antiphon for today. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 100, found on page 729 of the prayer book. Psalm 100. Saying together, Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, 
because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proved his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for this morning is Canticle 19, which can be found on page 94 of the Book of Common Prayer. Canticle 19 on page 94. Saying together, O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all of the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading today is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35, through chapter, 8, through chapter 10, verse 8. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had a compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Cast out demons. You receive without payment. Give without payment. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of my favorite pastimes is going to the theater. Since arriving in Amesbury, I have enjoyed being invited to see our children and youth participate in different productions. Whether it be comedies, tragedies, musicals, dance shows, concerts, I love it all. One of my favorite performances in the recent past was going with my brother to see The Legend of Zelda, Symphony of the Goddesses, a concert which features the music from Nintendo's popular Zelda video games. I was so impressed when a youth of St. James, Daniel, saw the background on my laptop a few years ago and commented, isn't that a symbol in the Legend of Zelda series? Indeed it is, I said. Although I have been to countless theater performances, as well as participated in a great number, as I was a theater major in college, ironically, I have not seen too many performances by that great bard William Shakespeare. I was very excited back in the summer of 2002 
when my parents bought tickets to go see Shakespeare in the Park in Massachusetts. To top it off, we were seeing Macbeth, my all-time favorite. My family arrived at the park, settled in, and I began flipping through the program. I then suddenly grimaced as the program read, Welcome to our 2002 summer season and our performance of Macbeth. This evening's performance will be set in modern times. Ugh. A somewhat popular gimmick is to take Shakespeare's plays, among other playwrights, and set them in modern times. Why can't we just keep them in their original setting? Now, like most teenagers of the 90s, I enjoyed the version of Romeo and Juliet set during modern times, starring Claire Danes and Leonardo DiCaprio but I always prefer when these plays are kept in their original setting. However, you could argue that Shakespeare, Sophocles, Euripides plays, among others, are timeless, and therefore can work well in any setting, as there are aspects to them we find just as relevant today. I feel Jesus' command given to his disciples 2,000 years ago to proclaim the good news the kingdom of heaven has come near shares this timeless aspect as it is needed, relevant for all times. After his baptism, after resisting temptation in the wilderness, Jesus begins his ministry among the people, and it began with a call, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. From that time on, we accompany Jesus as he moves about through different cities and villages, and appearing in the synagogues, teaching the people, spreading the good news through proclaiming this message. Through Jesus the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, the sick are healed, the dead are raised. All signs that the kingdom of heaven has come near. During the outset of Jesus' ministry, he called the twelve disciples. We hear named in our gospel passage from today. They were called at first with the words, follow me. Not knowing what that would entail, they take that leap into eternity and follow him. We find out today part of what that call entailed, as they are given another call, go and proclaim. Go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near, cure the sick, raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. The message which Jesus proclaimed as he began his ministry amongst the people, the message which the disciples have seen being fulfilled through Jesus' ministry, they are now called to proclaim themselves, to be bearers of that message and to take that message to others. They are called no longer to only bear witness, but now to directly participate in that message. What a moment. What an undertaking. I believe this is one of the most extraordinary, and yet at the same time, can be one of the most intimidating parts of Jesus' ministry. His call to us to share with him in his ministry. There are many parts of Jesus' life and ministry that bring us comfort, hope, solace. There are probably at least a few parts as well that give us pause, make us question, perhaps make us uncomfortable, and even worry. The command given to the twelve today, to go proclaim the kingdom has come near, Jesus eventually expands upon. 
We heard just last week at the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' command to the disciples to again go. This time, go and baptize. Go and teach others to obey all I have commanded you. Jesus wants his message and ministry to spread to others and asks us to make this happen. His followers continuing to proclaim his good news. It is an amazing call and at the same time can be so intimidating to the point where we may ask, can we do this? Can I do this? Can I share with Jesus in his ministry? And I hope we do ask these questions, my friends. For we will find through these questions Jesus has welcomed us all to follow him and welcomes us all to go, go, proclaim the good news, proclaim the kingdom of heaven has come near. <clears throat> Jesus sends the disciples forward, instructing them to proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. This call was issued 2,000 years ago, and while times have changed, circumstances have changed, the world has changed. Whether it was 100 years later, 500 years later, 1,000 years later, 2,000 years later, the years in between, or here today, that call from Jesus is just as relevant and just as needed as it was when Jesus sent out his first followers. And in proclaiming the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near, curing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons. What is it Jesus is asking the disciples to do? He is asking them, bring healing, God's healing, to the world. And that remains the call to us today. We may not be able to open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of the deaf, cure the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, but we all can bring healing. Jesus' healing message that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Near to us all. Over the past several weeks, I have received some drawings from some of our younger St. James prisoners. This is one of them. This is another. And finally this one. It's an ice cream cone with a hand as the ice cream. They are by different children through different mediums, and different settings. But these drawings all share something in common. When I received them, they made me smile. Smiling can be great healing for us and those we encounter. I invite us, if we can, right now, to smile. Smile, for we are beloved children of God. Smile, for God is with us and we are not alone during this most difficult time. Smile, for we have been given good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Say it, the kingdom of heaven has come near. 
smile for part of that good news is that Jesus through the Spirit enables us to proclaim the good news which means we are good news to one another. In this time of pandemic our smiles may be blocked by masks. Physical and social distancing may inhibit us from being together in the ways we would like. Yet the kingdom of heaven is near and comes closer and closer every day and we can proclaim that kingdom with Jesus. We are blessed to proclaim that kingdom with Jesus. It can be intimidating and if we are ever in search of how to proclaim the kingdom is near, if we were ever fearful, we cannot do it. Then just look to God and do it the same way God did it through Jesus Christ. By love. By loving our neighbor as ourself. This is healing. This is good news. This can bring brimming smiles to all around us. Smiles that will be seen in our eyes and in our outreach to one another. To God be glory, majesty, honor, and praise forever and ever.
service continues on page 53 with the Apostles' Creed. Page 53. Saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together, Suffrages B. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them, and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name forever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The Collect of the Day. Keep, O Lord, we beseech thee, thy household, the church, in thy steadfast faith and love, that by the help of thy grace we may proclaim thy truth with boldness and minister thy justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A call out for Sundays. O God, who make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Peace O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Mission Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. The Prayers of the People is Form 3, found on page 387 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. Page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, 
that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We especially remember in our prayers today Bishop Barbara Harris, whose 90th birthday was this past Friday, and all the firefighters who have given their lives in service on this Firefighter Sunday. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of St. James. We pray for Julie, Nancy, Susan, Doug, Kimberly, Jimmy, Marie, Ed, Shirley, Cleet, Rip, Jacob, Carol, Larry, Anna, Hugh, Barbara, Wayne, Victoria, Michael, Steve, Crystal, Liesel, Bill and Charlotte, Penelope, and Marty. You know their needs, dear Lord. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of all saints. Herb, Kristen, Kevin and his wife Paula, Mary Lou, Harry, Ann Dennis, Rick, Catherine, and Cameron. For our health workers, Melissa D'Alessandro, Ann Selig, Lillian's daughter Sarah, Beth Koopman, Matthew, Wilhelm. And for our elders, Christine, Sally Eames, John D., Bonnie's Aunt Lois, and Lori's Aunt Laura, Lillian, and Betsy Knight. We give thanks for this diocese, for the communities of St. James and All Saints, and our ability to gather for worship. We give thanks for all faith communities. We give thanks for all first responders, especially firefighters, on this Firefighter Sunday. Let us pray. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Our service continues with the general thanksgiving found on page 58. Saying together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, the world without end. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. That means we're like citizen soldiers. Uh, we all have our lives and careers and professions and so on and so forth. And <clears throat> we try to do those things and you're equipped with a pager that when there's a call for help, the dispatcher in West Newbury or Groveland or Merrimack, whatever, sends out a tone. And your pager opens up and you drop what you're doing and run to the station, grab your gear, jump on a truck, and you're, you're on your way. Um, the fire service, in my opinion, is one of the, the last true professions where its only purpose in life is to, to save people and property. When you call a fire department, you're going to get a response. Think about that in terms of calling any other government agency. <laughs> So, today we, we honor the firefighters that have given their lives in, in the line of duty. Mike Wire, who's the chief in West Newbury, was gracious enough to provide our turnout here for us today. Um, being a call firefighter, you have an option of bringing your turnout gear home and keeping it next to your bed, or if you're fast enough and you can get to the station and grab your gear, and get on a truck, you can do it that way. Um, I was a lieutenant in the Western Green Fire Department for a number of years. I enjoyed my service. I enjoyed the com camaraderie. Um, once you're a firefighter, I don't think you ever turn back. It becomes part of your, your essence and your being. So, with that, I'd like to read 
A fireman's prayer. When I'm called to duty, Lord, wherever the flames may rage, give me strength to save a life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it's too late, or so save an elder person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to heed my calling and give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if, according to your will, I am to lose my life, please bless, please, please bless with your protecting hand my children and my wife. Amen. The men and women of today's fire service are confronted with a more dangerous situation and environment than ever before. We are forced to continually change our strategies and tactics to accomplish our mission. Our methods may have changed, but our goals remain the same as they were in the past, to save lives and protect property, sometimes at a terrible cost. This is what we do. This is our chosen profession. This is the tradition of the firefighter. The fire service of today is ever-changing, but it is steeped in traditions 200 years old. One such tradition is the ringing of the bell. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of that day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and place their lives on the line for the good of their fellow citizen. And when the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, it was the bell that signaled the completion of that call. When a firefighter dies in the line of duty, paying the ultimate sacrifice, it is the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announces a comrade's passing. 
Today, we use this tradition as a symbol that reflects great honor, respect, and dignity to those who have given so much and served so well. And so, to our fallen brother,